In this video, I'm going to teach you kind of the secret to getting pressure in Madden 23, not just blitz pressure, but also shed pressure. And kind of wanted to break down something important that's going on in the current meta uh, with the way defenses are being ran and a subtle shift that you might need to make to your own defense. Now, we're in the 4-6 playbook today. It's the most popular playbook. It's got some of the best defensive formations in it. If you want to get my entire defensive ebook library, make sure you join the Patreon. We've got a blitzing ebook that breaks down how to blitz out of every formation in Madden 23. We've got a dollar, three, three, nickel over, big nickel over G, dollar, one, four, six, two, three, six, a ton of material in the Patreon. If you want to get access to all of our ebooks in there, it's only $10. So you can sign up by joining the Patreon in the description of the video down below. All right, guys, so I wanted to talk today about pressure, and I really wanted to talk about just kind of this basic meta uh, that we're seeing. So I'm just going to use tight, but you, you, it really just cross applies to any offense. It doesn't really matter. And it's this. So what we're seeing right now in the competitive meta is that really the ability, if you take a look at someone's ability, I'm going to use 3-3, but we're going to get to big nickel over G in just a second. Um, if you use the kind of meta abilities that uh, people are going to be rocking. If you look here, I have, and I'll just talk you through my abilities here. I have um, Larry Allen on the outside there. He has secure protector. Uh, Anthony Munoz, he has secure protector. And then at the uh, the guard positions, I have uh, Hilgenbrand, the free card that they give you for, I think he's a 92 overall. And I also have Ryan uh, Jensen. And those two guys get post up for zero AP. And then at the nose tackle or the center for me is Alan Fanica, I apologize. And uh, Alan Fanica has two abilities that are really valuable. Number one, he has secure protector for one AP. Number two, though, and I actually think more importantly, he has the matador ability, which basically makes him less susceptible to bull rush moves up the A gaps. The point of this is. We're seeing this meta not only affect the run game, but it's also affecting the pass game. So, for example, the run game. Uh, if I was to go to any kind of RPO style of run, this is known as the run commit glitch or the pancake glitch. If all I all I have to do is max protect, and if they if they're only blitzing three people, you're going to notice here that a lot of times you see here we're going to get these pancake animations. And, you know, as long as we don't fumble, it makes it a really, really good tip. So, again, all you want to do is on your RPO plays, you just max protect, and you're going to be able to get this pancake happening. Now, I've actually noticed that this happens in other scenarios as well. But as you see here, just Pancake City, and we're able to run. But this also informs us of something that I think is super critical about the basics of pass rushing in Madden 23. And it is the fact that you need to be blitzing a minimum a minimum of four people if you want to get sheds, just like you need to be blitzing a minimum of four people if you want to stop the run. Uh, let me illustrate what I'm talking about out of 3-3. Three, three. So if I go to RPO, if I go to that same uh, RPO, I'm going to max protect. Now, on defense, we've known this in years past, where all we need to do is just blitz our user, and that's going to confuse the game, and they're going to think that this is four people blitzing. You're going to notice that it's not going to work. You see Javon Kirsch gets pancaked yet again, and the run is still available to the offense. The same principle is true in the pass rush part or pass rush portion uh, of the game. How your uh, last year we were able to actually only blitz, I think you only had to blitz two people and you could bluff blitz one of your defensive linemen and then you could blitz your user and basically you could send two but the game would think you were sending four and you can get really good sheds. This year's game is not really like that at all. Um, it, it, it actually, I'm not even sure if it actually evolved or if it's just always been like that and maybe it just took us all year to figure that out. Um, but I want to show you something. So all we're going to do, we're not going to blitz our user. But we are going to run this little four-man kind of loop blitz out of 3-3 three, three, where we just uh, put that linebacker on a blitz, put him on a contain, and then slide him out. And we're going to go back to the RPO. So as you can see here, we only have four people rushing the quarterback. And what you're going to notice is it's not going to pancake. As you can see, it didn't pancake, and we're able to stop the run. The same is true for passing, okay? And uh, here's, what, here's what I can show you. So if I blitz my user, and I'm just going to put my user into coverage, I'm going to user him into coverage, you're going to notice that because of these post-ups, secure protectors, all those things, I'm going to have pretty good, pretty good time in the pocket. Occasionally, you'll get something like what you just saw right there from Javon Kurz, 
but it's actually really, really rare. Um, if I can manage this pocket, I'm going to have a lot of time. And we saw this in the uh, Madden Bowl, right? People having, you know, route bounces and all of those kind of things. You're going to notice here that if I don't blitz my user, it's not going to really change anything. Uh, as you can see here, pretty much all day to throw. And, you know, it really comes down to pocket management. If I can manage the pocket well, then I'm going to be fine, okay? So this, so again, the same principle is true. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm just, I'm not going to set up a blitz, but I'm going to blitz this guy. So that's my fourth, and I'm going to use her Lewis. And I want you to watch here. You're going to notice that we're going to get really good sheds. As you see there, that timer was way significantly um, increased just by blitzing four people. This brings me to my argument out of Big Nickel over G that I want you to consider, and that is that Big Nickel over G is really, really good sheds. It has all the coverage principles that you need to be effective, and you can send pressure kind of an old-fashioned way and style of sending pressure. The old-fashioned way and style of sending pressure would basically be we're going to blitz the left side, as you can see right here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to send four from this side, and then we're gonna drop this defender into whatever zone we want. So we're gonna drop him into a vertical hook in this example, maybe drop him into a hard flat. But what you'll see here is it creates this edge rush that can be really good. And again, if you don't get the pressure home, you're still going to get sheds. And again, you can also get this same piece from your standard you know, four-man rush. You'll see here that if I rush four, I'm getting significantly better sheds than I was out of three, three or dollar. The other thing that's going to happen is let's say they want to run the ball. You have an easier time stopping all of the meta runs in a four down lineman set traditionally. So what this basically practically means, and I'm going to give you one last tip to kind of bring it all home in just a second, is if they max protect, you're going to be able to shoot the run nine times out of 10, as you can see right there. Now, the last little piece of this that I think is actually super, super valuable, and not a lot of people I think have talked about this on YouTube yet, it's that when your user is blitzed, and you're not going to be able to really tell in practice mode, but when your user is blitzed, he plays, he doesn't jump as well in coverage. Um, he's more sluggish, actually. So this blitzing your user, they really try to get us away from that, and he won't catch picks as well not saying you can't catch any picks when your user's blitz. This is also very true if you put the lurker ability on maybe like a linebacker. But if I put this guy in a zone and they throw, you know, at my user, you'll see here that he's going to jump. And if you click on to a guy that's in his zone, he's going to jump better. So just something kind of to, to kind of bring it all home is we can not only send a couple different variations of pressure. So let me give you another variation. Let's send the pressure from the, the, the right side. And, then, and and something we didn't even get too far into, honestly, is we haven't even touched on the fact that you can send three and bluff blitz your nose tackle. So you'll see here, even if the pressure doesn't come in, we're going to get this. We're still going to get the good sheds. So this is actually the best formula for only sending two or three. If you want to send four, what's really cool about that is you could do something like this right here where you man, maybe you, you have a spy and, a, and a, a bluff blitz or something, you know, so you have the middle of the field covered and then you've got to, you've got to figure out how to play, you know, play the flats, for example. But, you know, maybe you do something like this where you've got this guy on the running back or whatever, but we're only sitting four here. And you can see that even though we're only sitting four, you're going to get disengages and all kinds of interesting pressures. So the beauty of this and all I'm trying to get at here is sending four is really, I think, the foundation right now defensively. I don't think that we can consistently get by with sending sending three. But what we can do is we can send four or even three technically and drop this side like we used to in old Maddens, and your pressure is still going to be pretty solid off of that edge. And in this year's game, it's hard to roll out. So you can actually force quarterbacks to roll opposite of their throwing hand and it unlocks a whole new potential for your blitzing defense. One in which I think B Big Nickel is actually uh, best equipped to handle. So thank you for watching the video. I hope that this was helpful. Hope you learned something. If you want to get access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive eBooks, make sure that you join the Patreon. The link is down in the description below.